guys. Welcome back to the shop. I'm John. This is Shop 209. Thanks for checking out all my previous videos and subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about Novas and what I'm doing to them and watch me fail sometimes. It happens. Thanks for checking out my last video. I relocated the shocks on the 74 Franken Nova. You can check that out right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a new rear end in my 73. The one that's in there, I chopped off the bearing ends a long time ago so I could put C-clip eliminators and go drag racing. Now I'm going back to more of a pro touring type suspension on there and I'm swapping the rear end so I can have regular, regular axles and bearings. The C-clip eliminators are not good on the street. Anyway, um, I figured I'd make a quick video on the differences in the Nova rear ends and how to spot the eight and a half inch. Let's go check it out. Okay. So 68 to 74 Novas, there were three rear ends available. The 12 bolt, which was the high performance rear end, heavy duty rear end from GM. You had your 8.2 inch 10 bolt and your 8.5 inch 10 bolt. From 68 to 71, the 8.2 inch 10 bolt was the only rear end you could get other than the 12 bolt. And then in 1972, they introduced the eight and a half inch 10 bolt. The eight and a half inch and 8.2 inch refers to the diameter of the ring gear. The 10 bolt refers to the number of bolts holding the ring gear to the carrier assembly. Now, a 12 bolt rear end has 12 bolts on the outside cover and a 10 bolt rear end has 10 bolts on the outside cover. Pure coincidence. I'm gonna show you a quick way to tell them apart. Okay. Now, 8.2 inch 10 bolt. It's got 10 bolts holding the cover on. It is rounded at the bottom corners. All right. The eight and a half inch 10 bolt has 10 bolts holding the cover on. It has squared off lugs on the bottom of the corners. All right, solid, they're not notched. I think a later model seven and a half inch had notched squares down here and it looks similar to the eight and a half, but it's not. Um, the 12 bolt, you'll see two bolts side by side on the cover holding it together. It has a 12 bolt cover also. If you see two bolts side by side, it's a 12 bolt, unless it's an Oldsmobile rear end um, some of those, I think the, the A-body cars on the Oldsmobile had 12-bolt covers, but they actually had a 10-bolt carrier. Okay, also, this is a monoleaf rear end. You can tell by the depth of the spring pad here, and that is a multi-leaf rear end. Now the 8.5 inch rear end is almost just as strong as a 12 bolt rear end. If you put some 30 spline axles instead of the factory 28 spline axles into your 8.5 inch 10 bolt, it's gonna be almost identical. The ring gear is bigger in a 12 bolt, but everything else is the same. The pinion diameter and pinion spline is the same in an eight and a half inch 10 bolt and a 12 bolt. The ring gear diameter, like I said, in the 12 bolt is larger, but if you upgrade the axles, most of your weak points is the pinion diameter and also in the axles. So if you're five or 600 horsepower, uh, eight and a half inch 10 bolt is fine for these cars. Okay, so I'm gonna get busy building a new rear end from a 73, and then I've got this leaf spring, sport suspension leaf spring kit that's going in that car. And we're gonna get ready to do a little autocross video. So that's coming up in the next month or so. Appreciate it, guys. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next video. Thanks.